welcome back. This week we're going to do a little bit of exploring in our own backyard. So we've come to St. Albans, which is very close to our house, and we're going to do some of the tour sites that we've never quite gotten around to seeing before, and we're going to bring you with us. And what are we going to do first? So, after having a quick English breakfast at a calf, which is a must-do when you come to England, we're going to explore the market a bit, go to St. Albans Cathedral, and learn about the first English saint. And then we're going to go and head down to check out some of Brillium because St. Albans was in fact a Roman town. Okay, but we're gonna have breakfast first, yeah? Yeah, let's go. Welcome to The Right Life. We're Catherine and Edward, a married couple based in London with a passion for travel and experiencing the world together. On our channel, we share our adventures from uncovering hidden gems to learning about new cultures and discovering amazing historical sites. Join us as we explore the world. One thing about St Albans, it used to be famous for, they used to have the most pubs per square mile. A lot of pubs have shut down over the last sort of 10 years, but um, there's still quite a few in St Albans and they're all down these little side streets. This one's called the Beehive. And this is where we're parked down here. Just a stone's throw from the Beehive, we have another pub called the White Heart Tap. You can see how close they are. The thing about St Albans is Wednesday and Saturday is market day. Uh, so we've come here on a Saturday and we're going to hit some of our usual spots. I've lost her already. There she is. She's going to tell me I nearly died now. You know what? You've just been darting across the street. There are cars coming. Oh. It's illegal to run people over in this country. People have accidents. You get everything here, clothes, timber floors, suitcases. As you can imagine, it's stupidly busy. It's so dotted between all the new age hippie the phone covers and the battery salesman. St Albans is quite like a foodie sort of town, so there's a number of stalls selling cakes and bread. This is one of our particular favourites, the egg, egg people. And there are a couple in their 70s that basically sell eggs out the back of a van. I'm not seeing the bread people. Ah, oh, here they are here. So which one to get? A black house rye or walnut bloomer? Black house rye, I think. Okay. And this is the uh, the boot. I'm sure Catherine will do a little bit of research and put some stuff up in the comments about what this place is. Oh, they got the taqueria now, so. <laughs> Don't quite fit in. The boot was first recorded in 1719 and could provide accommodation for the building of four soldiers, but had no stabling. Cell clock tower there. The clock tower was constructed in 1403 as a protest by the local people against the Abbey, who wanted to be the timekeepers for the town. Luckily the cheese man is still here. We don't need a lot because we uh, hit it quite hard last weekend. But we'll see. There's a few choice bits. And there's no queue. It's amazing. There's no man either. Oh, there he is. Hide the plane sight. can't see the cathedral for all the trees. This is the uh, Vintry Garden. I'm guessing this is where all the monks and all that hung out back in the day. St Albans Church was founded in 793, 
but the building behind us is a Norman building, which was consecrated in 1115. And it took about 110 years to build. Now, St. Alban is really very important. He was the first English saint, and he was a martyr. So Alban lived in Beryllium, which was the Roman name for St. Albans, during the third or fourth centuries AD. The story goes that Alban had provided a safe haven for a priest who was on the run and he was caught. When he was executed, his head was cut off and apparently the moment his head was cut off, the executioner's eyes popped and fell on the ground. So you can go to St. Albans Day, which is at the end of June every year, and they carry around big eyes, or so I've heard. Must have been quite the achievement 900 years ago. Still pretty impressive today. At 85 meters, this is the longest nave in England. Many of the bricks used to build this church are actually repurposed Roman bricks. You can take a guided tour here, and they have a 3D replica on their website. And there's nothing like seeing the real thing and being lost in the moment on your own. Uh, not my own, or with Catherine, but she's doing the more professional videoing. So there's a lot of um, wall paintings, and these are actually um, from the medieval period, dating as early as 1215, and there's not many of them intact, but you can still see the detail there, Jesus on the cross on the top one. So what we have here is the is a large brass showing Thomas de la Mer. He was the longest serving abbot from 1349 to 1396. So this little guy here, he was in fact a replica of what would have been up here originally, it presides over the original poor box, which is here from 1660, so older than America, and it would have been for money, donations for charity. Remember the poor. So this structure here is called a watching loft. It's made out of timber. And then on the other side of this structure, the medieval monks and townspeople kept an eye on St. Alban Shrine and its treasures. It's English only surviving wooden watching loft. And here we have the, the tiny entrance with the stairs. Take you up to the, the watching level. And this is the Shrine of St. Albans. England's first saint. Below us we have the Duke of Gloucester's uh, burial site. He is a brother to King Henry V, fought at the Battle of Agincourt. Uh, he was a scholarly man uh, as well as a fighter and uh, he's buried here. It's an impressive organ, said the actress to the bishop. People have been uh, worshipping here for 1700 years. Well, I don't know about you, Catherine, but after I've visited a church, I've, I like to get dirty again, so I'm going to have a pint. I mean, we have a plethora of old pubs to choose from. And we're about to go to one of England's oldest pubs. Yes, but there's controversy about that. Okay. We'll tell you all about it. Are you ready for the hill? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we should be on pub watch. So just over there, another pub. <laughs> As we come through the other, around the back of the church, we're going to head down the hill in a minute to the pub. Let's show you the church, cathedral, I should say. There's lots of different construction so you've got brick stone later additions which they turn into a little cafe area what an absolutely wonderful day today is it's beautiful come on keep up keep up give over we've made it to the fighting cocks which is reported to be one of the oldest pubs in england although there are some other pubs with the same claim anyway let's go in in, in here for a beer
All right, so what do you know about this pub then? There's a big controversy about what actually is Britain's oldest pub, and the Fighting Cox has a pretty decent claim to it. They say that they were founded in, in 793, which would make it several hundred years the oldest pub. However, no one's really quite sure because despite being in the Guinness Book of World Records as being England's oldest pub. The historical records really just show that there has been a pub here, building here since the 11th century. The old fighting cops was in until 1872, and the reason it has an odd octagonal shape, as well as a sort of interesting name, is because this used to be a pigeon house at one point. Yeah. It's the other oldest pub. The one well, with the claim to it is the uh, Jerusalem Inn, isn't it? Well, I'm looking at my phone here. I, I've got a list. Ye old trip to Jerusalem, which we've actually been to. It's in Nottingham and it's kind of built into a rock. Super cool pub with lots of little um, cozy nooks and crannies where you can have quiet talks. And it was allegedly 1189, but that's not the only one. There's one called the Royal Standard of England, which is in Beaconsfield from 1086. I think we've been there as well. Have we? Yeah. Uh, there's, I know we've been to this one, the Old Ferry Boat Inn in St. Ives. It says it's from 560, which is a couple hundred years older than this one. The Bingley Arms says it's from 953. So I think that this is a really controversial topic, and if you ask the wrong person, you could end up in a bit of an argument. Yeah, but I mean, whatever, whatever the outcome, it's an old pub. And it, we like it, and it's nice on a hot summer's day like today. It's got a lovely garden, and um, what is interesting is since I've lived here, it's had three or four different owners actually. And it's closed a few times, and I hate to think that the oldest pub in England could actually go out of business. So when you come to your trips in England, support whatever pub you walk by and have a pint, because we like our pubs. I'll drink to that. So cheers. I poured it down myself. B roll material. <laughs> Time to head back up the hill to the church. Keep calling it a church, it's a cathedral. Oh, I'll tell you, this walk is going to be a lot harder after a pint. Well, I'll tell you one thing walking up the hill is a lot harder than walking down it, especially after you've had a pint. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, made it anyway, not too out of breath. Next up, we headed to the St. Albans Museum. Pretty impressive mosaics. Apparently mosaics were expensive and only the more affluent households could afford them. It did not grace every room but were used to floor the more important ones such as the dining rooms or bath suites. Some of the finest mosaics found in Britain were produced here in Beryllium, most of which have been found under the park outside that we'll take a walk through in a few moments. I always find it so interesting the way Rome really brought trade. So they've got goods here that are from Africa and from the Mediterranean and this is or England that would have been quite the track. So these rooms have been recreated by finds from the local area. So here you would have had the family shrine with a statue of the god of your household. I'm not sure who that one is. So all of these um, paintings were found and they've been moved here and they've got the original and then they've recreated it. One thing that's particularly interesting is you couldn't get so much marble up here very easily, so they would paint it to make it look like marble. Give an extra bit of elegance. Do you want marble on our walls? No. Oh. Don't want to look like a Roman. No. I mean, it does look nice, and it's very clever what they've done, but it's all really gloomy. Sort of a Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen inspired motif. Should we talk about the elephant in the room? Are you calling me an elephant? That we both always wear our green shirts all the time oh, in like the last six like my sister instead <laughs> of my wife. So. Look, we get dressed independently. <laughs> it's a Roman horde. 
159 gold coins. I don't think they're all here now, but I found 10 miles away, close to a Roman road. Interestingly, this coffin was found with, a skeleton, with an intact skeleton and they were able to reconstruct the man who was in it. And this is what, you know, probably would have looked like. Sandridge hold. Wish I could find a hold. Yeah, me too. I wish we were in our backyard. I think there's a hold in that drawer. It's very interesting because in all the drawers here, they've just got more stuff that they found and like some broken glass and pottery here. Oh, that was I wonder if there's any, there's no coinage over here then. Nice locked. After several hundred years as one of the biggest and most important, most beautiful, well built up uh, Roman cities in Britain, Brilliant was abandoned around 400. And a lot of it is just gone because it was used to build the new town, which is up the hill. A lot of it went into building the, the cathedral and some of the oldest buildings in the city, which is why there's not a whole lot left now. However, the park outside is where all of the remains from this museum have been found, and there's a few more bits you can go see. Yeah, uh, there's still some Roman walls in situ in the, in, in the sort of playing fields and landscape gardens around the pub. And it is some of the best Roman ruins, most beautiful Roman ruins that have been found in all of Britain, which means this wasn't just a military outpost, this was a real thriving city. It's quite interesting because obviously, you know, it's, it's, there's not as much Roman stuff here as like you would say find in France or obviously Italy, but then we are quite far. We are almost, we're not at Hadrian's Wall, uh, which we've seen in a previous video, uh, but we are on the outskirts of, the, of the, the, the far reaches of the empire. We're only sort of three, four hundred miles away from the furthest reach that the Roman Empire got, so it's obviously understandable that there's not much of it here, but there's still quite a lot to see. It's fascinating. We've just done the Verillion Museum. I'm not going to lie, it's a bit pricey. Six pound for locals, which we are not, or eight pound if you live outside St Albans. That's each. Um, it's quite a small museum. Uh, there's lots to do for kids and there's videos and things like that and it is quite interesting but to be honest I mean we was in there sort of 45 minutes and you could probably you know stay in there a bit longer read all the you know bits and pieces and look at the videos but you could probably knock that that museum out in an hour and a half but it is interesting and it is part of the fabric of the town and it's important that you know the, the money that we contribute obviously goes into keeping the excavations alive and all that kind of thing so interesting thing to do glad we've done it and uh, now we're going to move on to the roman amphitheater so we've just entered the uh theater this might be good catherine's broken the new expensive camera anyway we just got into the theater three pound each to get in it's a private site so it's not part of the Verillium Museum. Let's see what it's all about. They've got a Roman theatre open air festival kicking off in a couple of days. That's why there's all these lighting rigs being set up. So it's a bit weird. They've obviously got some kind of event going on. But, you know, with the stage and the people there, it does kind of give you a feel of what it would have been like nearly 2,000 years ago. Because obviously they would have had plays and there's all sorts going on back then. It's exactly the same format as before. I'm guessing there's all sort the of seating around here and they would have had maybe their stage would have been over here where that column is. The hedgerow back there is where Watling Street is. Watling Street goes all the way to Hollyhead which is in the northwest tip of Wales. Apparently, the play they're performing is Romeo and Juliet, and this theatre was used to perform 
theatre. They didn't do gladi gladiatorial games here, only theatre. And apparently it was free for local people to come to um, whenever there was a special holiday, like the Emperor's birthday or celebration of some feast. We also learned that it would have been all performed all by men and sometimes even in Greek. And there was less about what the show was about, but more about how unique it was to have a fun day out. <gasps> I don't have to buy tickets to the play now, just watch the rehearsal. Most of Roman St Albans was excavated in the 1930s and they did do a pretty thorough job of William Park across the way and here. However, this spot behind me is marked as not quite excavated yet. I was saying that that's a carpenter's shop over there. With the bronze worker shop next to it. Mr Baker and the candlestick maker. And more importantly, the wine shop. So there's an underground shrine over there. A second century townhouse. This temple is one of a series of buildings that continues to be rebuilt after the theatre fell into decline. In fact, the neighbourhood was once the heart of one of the busiest town centres in the country. When the shops were excavated between 1957 and 1961, broken crucibles and waste metals showed that most of the shops had been occupied by blacksmiths and bronze workers. These shops were destroyed by Queen Boudicca in AD 60. In about AD 170, a large townhouse was built behind the shops, part of which can be seen today, which is this. This apparently down here was a Roman shrine. Well, there's not much of it left now. What do you think? I'm afraid I'm going to lose my microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Isn't it? Um, this is not the first time we found underground shrines. No. Which is really interesting. Why is this a Mithrash shrine? Because those seem to be the ones that go underground. Ah. Um, okay. Super interesting. Okay. And the Almo? And the Almo. These are the remains of the Roman walls of Brilliam City. So behind us, is where all the city would be. Behind us is where the museum is, and also where the theater is, and if we walk back that way behind Edward, who's filming right now, because he's tired, then we'd be at the Fighting Cocks. So as you can see, this is a very easy, a lot of walking, but you can easily do this as a day trip and see a lot of St. Albans just coming from London. Yeah, it's just, just the rest of the park there. Just outside the Fighting Cox pub, and there's this beautiful lake and park. I'm not sure what this bird is. Maybe someone can tell us in the comments. I think it's probably a kingfisher or something like that, but it hasn't got the blue. We're finishing St Albans. There's lots of other things to do for St Albans. There is a train from King's Cross that gets here in about 25 minutes. Uh, and as we've driven here today, there's plenty of places to park. There's lots of food options. I do not work for the St Albans Tourist Board. But, but you'd like to? I'd like to, yeah. If they would, if they would like to sponsor this video, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm happy to be a, a booster for the St Albans Tourist Board. But that concludes our videos. Please like and subscribe and make any comments. Or if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them. Thank you very much. Bye.